I am Ava, and I am almost in my late thirties. Meanwhile, my friends around me were getting married and building families one after another. Ever since I broke up with my boyfriend when I was in college, I had been single for a long time. I was unable to find a suitable partner, and I looked at my friends who were happy with their families. I grew more and more impatient. Sometimes, when I met my friends for a girls' night out, those with families always said, "You should save money for yourself while you are still single." They advise that if you have a saving account separate from your common property, it will definitely be useful no matter what happens after you get married. I didn't really understand what they meant by that, but as a bachelorette, I didn't have the opportunity to be extravagant. And other than the living expenses that I put into my parents' house, I was steadily increasing my assets for myself by saving money and investing in stocks. I then finally decided to get married. Jacob works in sales for one of my business partners. As a receptionist, I often saw him coming and going within the company. As we greeted each other, we naturally began to have casual conversations, which led to a deep relationship. It wasn't long before we were ready to get married. My married life with my husband was very peaceful. And I felt very safe when I was with him. I felt a little bit awkward about getting married in my late thirties, but my husband was already in his forties. I promised myself that I would cherish the time we spend together for the rest of our lives. However, this carefree life did not last long. The happy days soon faded away. The biggest couplet was my mother-in-law Lily. When I went to greet her at the wedding, the first thing she said to me when she saw me was, "I thought you were a pretty young lady, but you actually look quite subtle and plain." Huh? <laughs> How old are you? Her words were polite, but it was clear that she was being bitterly sarcastic toward me, an old woman. I'm thirty-seven. Really. And this is your first marriage. You are not being punished too severely, are you? Do you have children? No, nothing like that. Because I have never been married before. I wondered if that was the right way to turn things around. I also wondered about Lily, who was so blatantly inquisitive at the first meeting. My father-in-law was quietly listening to what I was saying. And my husband-to-be was smiling, as if he was very troubled. Why is he not protecting me? I realized that, although he was kind, he couldn't stand up for his mother. Thinking back, it may have already been decided that there was going to be an irreparable fraying of our lives. After our marriage, we moved in with my parents-in-law. Until then. My husband had always lived at home and supported his parents by himself, so he strongly asked me to support them after marriage. To be honest, I am not very good at supporting my parents-in-law, especially Lily. She's been the worst from the first time I met her, and that impression has never changed. I'm sure my mother-in-law is the same. Ever since we started living together. She has been sarcastic and harsh about every little thing, and so my heart felt like it was being pricked. At first, I was just hurt, but as she continued saying things to me, I began to feel an inexpressible anger. But I didn't want my marriage with my husband to be damaged, so I desperately endured the bullying. Recently, however, my mother-in-law began to mistreat me. Not only with sarcasm, but also with blatant harassment. One morning, after getting ready, I went to the dining table to find that there was not enough breakfast for one more person. Is anyone skipping breakfast today? I wondered and asked my mother-in-law, who was cooking in the kitchen, "What are you talking about? Everyone is here today, but there's not enough food for one more person." Right? Oh, that. 
I don't like a girl who doesn't know what she's doing. So I didn't make anything for you. Even though you usually cooked for us. You are my daughter-in-law, aren't you? If that's the case, you should get up early and make breakfast for everyone. What kind of nerve do you have to leave it to me alone? I'm not going to cook for you from now on. Go eat on your own. It should be easy for you because you only have to cook for yourself, right? I'd been so lenient with you. My mother-in-law says this. It makes breakfast just for my father-in-law and my husband, ignoring me at all costs. She even prepared a lavish box lunch for them. But obviously, I am the one who married into this family. So perhaps I should be more active in the housework. Even if she said some mean things to me, she'd been preparing meals for me so far. So my mother-in-law is not a bad person. That's what I told myself. However, after that, my mother-in-law's harassment of me escalated. One Sunday, my mother-in-law told me that she was going to meet her friend for the first time in a long time, and she was very excited the night before. When I woke up in the morning, she was already gone. And to be honest, I was relieved that Lily, who was always mean to me, was not there. The house was very quiet with my husband and father-in-law. I prepared lunch for the three of us. I wondered what time my mother-in-law would be home. I wondered if she would come home for dinner. I didn't hear from her until after 4 p.m. So I decided to cook only for the three of us who were at home at the time and then decided to prepare dinner for my mother-in-law later. And when dinner was prepared, and the three of us were sitting around the table, I heard my mother-in-law's voice saying, I'm home more happily than usual. I had so much fun today. It's so nice to see friends, isn't it? I bought souvenirs for everyone. My mother-in-law came into the living room, hurriedly saying so then looked at the dining table and suddenly became grumpy. Did I ask you to prepare dinner? No, um, I didn't hear from you, so I thought you might be coming home late and prepare dinner. I thought I'd prepare dinner for you later. As I was stumbling over my words, my mother-in-law became angry. Since I went out today, I was going to buy a lot of delicious delicacies from the department store. See? I bought all this food, and yet, it's all for nothing. Get rid of all those food you made, even if they have an expiration date. Your food is so bad that it's not even edible to begin with. Put yourself in the shoes of your husband and father and know who were forced to eat such bad food. Here, put everything down the sink. My mother-in-law's forcefulness pushed me, my husband and my father-in-law, to take the dinner that we had laid out on the table to the sink. Oh, but you don't have any of the side dish, do you? So please eat the meal you had made. I'm glad you didn't let all the food go to waste. I couldn't help but feel angry at her words. But it would be very strange to get angry at this point. I tried my best to control my anger and decided to eat my meal alone behind the kitchen table. At the dining table, my mother-in-law was enjoying herself. This is being curry tofu from famous Chinese restaurant, and this is from a famous chef. She was explaining to them about the food she had booked. She must have had a lot of shopping at the department store. They listened to her seeming completely uninterested and she didn't even notice that they were looking a bit bored. I felt a little sorry for my mother-in-law, but as I was listening to her from the kitchen, I got flabbergasted when I saw her outfit. Isn't that the new dress I had bought to wear on our next company trip? I couldn't stand still, so I ran out of the room. Um, Lily? My mother-in-law looked at me with a surprised face. That's my dress, isn't it? Why are you wearing it? Oh, 
I wanted to wear a new dress since I was going to meet a friend. I looked around and found just the right one. I'm sorry, I didn't know it was yours. I knew it was a lie. She knew it was mine and she had deliberately worn it without permission. I was looking forward to going out in my new dress. And then she took it away from me so easily. Moreover, this dress was the perfect size for me. But when my mother-in-law put it on, her flabby belly was visible. I guess she is basically the type of person who doesn't care about what she wears as long as she can wear it. I don't know what people think of her outside the house, but I can't forgive her for ruining my new dress. Besides, that bag she is using was also mine, isn't it? I realized even more. The bag that my mother-in-law used to bring back souvenirs. It was also a branded bag that I had used with care. How could she use someone else's property without permission? Does this person have no common sense? You know what? I was going to do a lot of shopping today, so I thought our large bag would be good. I found just the right one, so I used this. Was this yours too? Then I'm sorry. My mother-in-law was so hateful to me. My anger had already reached its peak. This was not the first time my mother-in-law had taken my personal belongings without my permission. In the past, she had taken my watch, which was given to me by my mother. And she also traveled with my father-in-law using the ticket that I was going to give to my parents as a present. There were many other incidents. After remembering all of this, I started to feel like I didn't care anymore. I'd been trying to keep my mouth shut and bear it because I don't want to ruin our family. But now, I have no choice but to take it out on her. But aren't you being a little too rebellious today? You only live here like a womb that eats on our own dime. So don't make a big fuss when I borrow something from you. If you have problem with me, you can leave any time you want. My mother-in-law said firmly. With those words, I felt something snap inside me. Yes, next week. I'll get everything done by next week. Have you made up my mind? I then took a longer bath than usual that day to cleanse myself. The week that followed felt like a long time. My mother-in-law continued to harass me, but I could bear it knowing that it would be over soon. I no longer felt the threat of affection for my husband, who kept trying to put on a kind face. I was surprised at myself that my feelings for him have gotten cold. But I don't want to continue living like this anymore. I wanted to be free as soon as possible. With these feelings alone, I spent that week patiently enduring. Then came the fateful Sunday. My mother-in-law was humming to herself and vacuuming the house. The time when she could be happy like that would soon be over. I had called someone and arranged for him to come to our house in the afternoon. Then the person rang the doorbell. My mother-in-law was surprised at the sudden arrival and invited him inside the house. Well then, the counterattack begins. What is this all about? You say you are an appraiser. But what are you going to sell? My mother-in-law looks at me anxiously. The person I invited is an appraiser of antiques. I called him here today because there is something I wanted to check. I wanted to clarify something. Lily, you told me that you lost the watch that was given to me by my mother, right? I haven't received it back yet. But did you find it after that? I calmly asked my mother-in-law. Well, that's... I haven't found it yet. But it's a cheap one that you can buy anywhere, right? Why don't you just buy the same one again? You're persistent, aren't you? My mother-in-law still doesn't seem to take offense at all. I continued. 
That watch was actually a memento of my grandmother's. A famous branded watch that cost over $300,000. It was a limited edition model, from my grandmother's era. So you can't get one anymore. My mother-in-law's face turned pale at my words. My father-in-law comes from the side. Oh, I remember you sold a watch at an antique store. You mean that one? He said. You sold a memento at an antique store? My husband was puzzled. N no, it looked nice, so I thought I would use it to earn a little extra money. I thought I would let them use it, but I was going to buy it back when I could afford it. I didn't know it was so old. I think that, for all her feigning weakness, she soon returned to having that strong expression, looking down on me, to no end. If that's the way she's going to take it, I'm not going to give up. So, Mr. Miller, what was the results of the appraisal of that watch that I requested the other day? I urged him. I'm not certain, but if it is a limited edition model of the year, I think it will be no less than two hundred thousand dollars, even if it's conservative estimation. The appraiser said so clearly. What? My mother-in-law was surprised with her mouth open. What? I can't believe you sold such a valuable item without permission. My husband was also surprised. He had noticed that my mother-in-law was taking my personal belongings as she pleased, but my husband had pretended to ignore it until now. Still, I can't forgive him for that even now. But it's a watch. I didn't have much, so if I could use it to bring in some money, it would be my last act of filial piety. I said quietly, "The last one." My husband was surprised. I feel sorry for you, though you were not to blame. I don't want to live with you anymore, with my in-laws and your lack of interest in defending me. Yes, I know. I'm getting divorced too. So you and your mother are strangers to me now. What? Divorce? What do you mean? My husband was very upset. I'm sorry, but I've already made a decision. That's right. I will never waver in this feeling again. I have no love left for my husband. Lily seems restless. She seems unmoved at all that she had sold off the watch. I can't believe that watch was worth that much. If I buy it back now, I wonder if I can sell it for more. My mother-in-law is not afraid to talk nonsense like that. I doubt her nerve to say such a thing even after all this time. You said you were getting a divorce, didn't you? If that's the case, give us a little more money for taking care of your living expenses. Until now, again with the money talk. I was really fed up. Oh, okay. Can I send it as a check? How much do you want? My mother-in-law seemed to be surprised when I answered without hesitation. A check? I don't care how much it is. To be honest, I have more than enough assets, so I'm not troubled by money at all. Assets? Where in the world did you get those assets? That's none of your business. Thank you for all the help you've given me. Goodbye. I said that, and the appraiser and I quickly left the house. I would never cross the threshold of this house again. I felt really refreshed. In the week since I decided I was ready to get divorced, I first organized my personal belongings. As a friend had told me a long time ago. I have over three hundred thousand dollars in assets from savings and stock investments in my name that I made before I got married. In the event of divorce, common property is usually divided with the husband, but since it's all my personal assets, it's handled differently. With this much money, even if I can't marry anyone in the future, I will have enough money to live on my own until retirement. You should save money while you are still single. I didn't really understand that. 
But now that I got married and divorced, I am really glad that I have my own assets. On the advice of a friend, I started investing in index funds. The initial amount of saving was small, but it increased it to five thousand per month. The sixty thousand per year I accumulated has been growing rapidly, supported by the strong economy and compound interest calculations. It has been fifteen years since I was a bachelor. My steady investment in mutual funds has paid off, and I have amassed a large fortune. My ex-husband and in-laws had no choice but to continue living in the house after I was gone. I heard that my ex-mother-in-law's harassment and bullying of me had become a rumor in the neighborhood, and she was very unhappy because she could no longer get along with them. My ex-husband was labeled as someone whose wife immediately ran away, just when he had finally got married, because he was too weak to stand up. To his parents and take care of his wife, I think he will probably continue to pursue marriage. But honestly, I think it will be difficult. Marriage is not a goal, but a new start in life. I strongly felt that this time. I thought that since I got married in my late thirties, all I had to do was to spend the rest of my life peacefully. But I never thought that I would have such a turbulent married life. But that is exactly why I am determined to meet my true life partner, with whom I can overcome the good times and the bad times together. Until I meet such a match someday, I will be on my own again for the time being. I will continue to steadily increase my assets to live on my own.